Okay, kids, this video is on noble gas notation, second video on electron configurations. You are going to love noble gas notation because it's going to save you lots of time. So before we do a few homework problems from your noble gas notation assignment, we are going to talk just a little bit about what it is and why it's amazing, okay? So before we knew noble gas notation, if we were to write the electron configuration for argon, it would look like this. And then for potassium, it would look like this. All right? And if you look at these, and you probably noticed this in your homework, your other homework assignment, when you look at these, there's a big, big similarity here. So if you look at argon's um, electron configuration, it goes 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6 you see that ex exact same sequence in potassium up to there, right? 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. The only different part in potassium is that there's an extra 4s1 at the end. So what we can do to save a lot of time is to actually just substitute in argon's configuration for this huge chunk of information. Okay, so this all becomes argon, but it has to be a special argon notation. We have to put it in brackets, okay? So that is the stand-in for the notation, electron configuration for argon. So argon in brackets means this whole thing, okay? And so since argon in brackets represents that, all that's left for us is to write 4s. One. And now that is the electron configuration in noble gas notation for potassium. Much, much easier. Um, and the reason it's, it's nice to do this and it's okay to do this is because, remember the electron filling rules, all of the lower energy levels should be full. And so it's kind of not, they're not as interesting as the electrons that are left on the end. Okay, so this forest one, and we'll learn later why those are kind of more important and a little special. Um, but the ones that are in there, all the lower ones that are full, they're not as exciting, okay, for, for the most part. So that's the basis of noble gas notation. Let's put it into use for your homework assignment, the noble gas notation homework assignment. Remember that this is to be copied into your notebook. So you just need to write the heading, and then number one, iron, or Fe, and you're going to write the noble gas notation for iron, okay? So the way that you can do this very easily using noble gas notation is when you look at your periodic table and you find iron, which is the first one that we're trying to do, trying to write the noble gas notation for iron, we find iron, and the way you can use noble gas notation very easily is to go backwards on your periodic table until you hit a noble gas. So we go backwards. Remember that the noble gases are all of these in column number 8A, okay? This is um, the family, group or family, the noble gases, okay? So if we go backwards from iron all the way, and then we hit argon, right? So that is the previous noble gas, is argon. So what we'll do is we'll put argon in brackets here to represent that if we're writing the electron configuration for iron, argon in brackets means everything else that was up here, electron configuration. So it represents 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, right? But we just have to write argon in brackets. Then once we have that, we need to pick up um, from this point. So now remember, we're trying to get to iron here, so we need to go here. So if you remember the way we can use our periodic table, that is 4s, right? So this is the 4s, and it's full. So we're going to do 4s2 as the next part. Right? And then after the 4s, so we're trying to get here, then we're in the 3d. Remember, the d block is an energy level behind this number. So this is the 3d section, and you can see that on here as well. Okay, so now we're in 3D. If it were full, it would be 3D10, but it's not. We're going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 
So it's going to be 3D6. Okay, so that's it. Noble gas notation of iron is argon in brackets, 4S2, 3D6. Done. Pretty nice, huh? So let's do one more for silver. All right, so when you look at your periodic table, you find silver down here. Um, so what we're gonna do is same thing. We're gonna go back to the previous noble gas. We're gonna go backwards, backwards, backwards. We hit krypton. So we're gonna start with that, krypton in brackets. We're gonna go a little faster through this one here now that you're getting the hang of it. So krypton in brackets, and then we pick up where we left off. So 5s2. Okay, so 5s2 gets us here, and now we're in 4d. Remember, they're an energy level behind. So 4d1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Gets us to silver. So 4d9. Done. Easy. So much time is saved. Again, like the other um, electron configurations, the, one of the places that can get tricky is when you incorporate the F block. So just remember, like let's say if you have tungsten here or something, um, that after you have the 6S, it goes down to the 4F. And you have to have these filled 4F14, and then you jump back into the D block. Okay, so be careful there. Again, it's on your periodic table. It shows you there, and it's on here. shows you that they fit in right there. Okay, um, but that's noble gas notation. Hopefully you enjoy it, and it'll make your homework assignment a lot easier.